Well, welcome to the 700 Club Canada. We're so glad you joined us today. We have a special guest in the studio all this week, Bill Markham. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's so great to be here with all of you all across this great nation around the world, working through this kind of interesting season together. Right, right. How, where, you had to come a long way to come here, right? I, I did. I had to drive about a, big a minute. Yeah, about a minute. About a minute. Yeah, well, so. So you're a St. Catherine's pastor. Correct. Tell us a little bit about you, Bill, your family. Yeah, well, I mean, my greatest joy in life is really to be, is being a father. And I'm married, I have three wonderful kids, and love pastoring. Been here about almost 20 years now. Wow. And just love bringing hope and faith, especially yeah. in this season of yeah. incredible fear, right? Yeah. This is the amazing hope that we have. We have faith yeah. in the face of fear, and I just love that. I know, that's so true. And as a church, I'm sure you're seeing the challenges of, you know, not meeting or meeting. Yes. I mean, but people just need hope in this time. What, what have you seen? Like, what are, what are, what challenges are coming your way? What are you hearing from people? Yeah, well, what I'm, what I'm re rem being reminded of is that we need to be connected. Mm -hmm. I was reminded actually this morning, thinking about this uh, in Psalm chapter one, where it reminds us that those who are, who are uh, follow God's law are like trees that are rooted and we need to be rooted. And so for me in this season, I've worked really hard to stay connected to God, yeah. but also connected to others. Yeah. And through technology, we have that amazing opportunity. And so, yeah, I just want to encourage you, make sure you're staying connected to God and to those that you love and care about. And so this is really important in this season. It's That's so true because I know myself, isolation, that affects your mental health, emotional yes. state. So like... We got to be creative, right? Yeah. I, I, I don't know about you. I'm so zoomed out. <laughs> uh, I'm just like, oh, I have to do one more Zoom call. But the truth is, we can now go in smaller groups. We can, you know, go to someone's door and hang out. I've been hanging out in a lot of backyards. What about you? 100%. Yeah. And one thing we're doing is watch parties. So, oh, that's yeah. Neat. So, a lot of churches are online. And so, yeah. you invite people over to your home and do that. And so, yeah. there's lots of ways you can be connected, yeah. but don't get disconnected. That's a very good point. And today, it's gonna, we're going to be talking about prayer. This is our week of prayer. Mm -hmm. So up next is, let's see how Marriott's cancer diagnosis, how prayer changed everything. Watch this. My doctor had ordained me to be quarantined, okay? Yes, with a mask and rubber glove. And people coming in this door? And I couldn't touch them or anything like Masks, that. Masks, because her that white blood... Counts. It was so if she had caught a cold, it would have killed her. He told me it was fatal. When I went to see the doctor, that's when he discovered that my white blood count was really low. Like, and our doctor booked um, specialists to find out what was causing this. And when I went there, right away they ordered a bone marrow biopsy. And this is how we found out, like a few weeks later, that I did have, I was diagnosed with large glandular T-cell <laughs> lymphocytic leukemia. You know, I did not remember all those words, but I did remember leukemia. Ah, leukemia. Roy says, how do you feel about all this? And I'm like this, well, I know God will take care of it. Whatever needs to be done, whatever, you know, we'll deal with it. You know, God has called you, but sometimes you just say, are we really in the right place? It was a time of re reflection and really depending on the Lord. After that, in July 10, uh, that's when the trouble came. My hemoglobin was down 65, which I need a blood transfusion. That's what they book you for. And the white blood count was 0.05. It's just about off the chart. So anyways, uh, at that time, they didn't know what to do with me. They didn't know where that this come from. They did tests for about like two, three weeks every day, testing anemic and uh, iron, potassium, everything. But everything came back, came back normal. But then they think, well, we don't know what's causing this. We have to find this out. So we may have to do a bone marrow transplant. A couple of weeks later, the next visit to the oncologist, it was already pre-planned. They were prepared to do a blood transfusion and uh, start the planning for the bone marrow transplant. And we said, Father, you promised to bless your people. Who bless your people? Our whole life is wrapped up in blessing your people, Israel. So, 
Father, we claim that promise for a total healing for Mariette based on your word promise. They come in the room and they kind of ignored us and they're still looking at their sheets and pointing and talking about the results. This is really good. I said, said holy girls, what's, what's happening? So she kind of just cleared her throat and said, <clears throat> well, at this time we don't see any sign or evidence of leukemia in your wife's body. So I said, praise the Lord, that's a miracle. She said, well, we can't say that. I said, well, what can you say? She said, well, uh, all we can say is that medical science has no answer for what's happening in your wife's body. I still praise the Lord, that's a miracle. <laughs> I am fantastic. As far as I know, there's no more leukemia there, and uh, I don't have any symptom of any kinds. i just very, very full of energy. You know, in this world, there's a lot of trials, and even if you're a Christian, you're still gonna have a lot of trials and challenge. But God says that um, he has come to overcome the, that. And he says, be a good cheer. I will help you. So I'm speaking to the people now. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be sick to have leukemia or cancer or anything like that. There's all kinds of challenges out there. There's relation, broken relation. There's drug addict. There's all, all kinds of things that's happening. And we know that. And we still challenge with that in our family as well. But never to give up. Just look up to him because he still is. Jesus the healer, Jesus the provider. He will hear you and he will provide for you whatever you need, but you need to call on him and then believe it and you, you have your problem to your solution. <laughs> yes, Jesus is still the healer. He is the provider. How often do we forget that when we're in the middle of a crisis like Mariette, but she, this testimony, I just love when her and her husband said, we have spent our lives blessing people. That's how they lived their life. They lived their life pouring out into others. So they were counting on God to pour that blessing back into them at this crisis. And he sure did. They experienced a miraculous healing. You know, something that really stood out to me, Mariette said that when we're in trouble, when she was facing this cancer diagnosis, she had to call out to God. I don't know about you, but sometimes it's easier to pick up the phone and call a friend, you know? Call the neighbor, call the pastor, call the church, but are we calling out to God? Because when we cry out to God, what we're saying is, I'm counting on you. I'm asking you to lead. I'm fully relying on you. Listen to what Luke 9, 23 says, and this is from the message. Then he told them what they could expect for themselves. This is Jesus. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me and I'll show you how. Wow, Jesus was showing them that. He said, this is what you can expect. You can expect suffering and you can try to run and hide, but you must embrace whatever suffering comes your way. Why? Well, Jesus embraced suffering all the way to the cross for us. And so that's why he promises he will be here with you in your suffering. Call out to him. He's here for you and he loves you. We'll be right back. I want to thank you for watching. I, I don't know where you are. Maybe you're in your kitchen, maybe you're in your living room, you're watching on TV, or maybe you're watching via social media because our show airs on Facebook Live, or you know, you can watch it off our website, 700club.ca. But thank you for being here. And you know, I was on the phone this week, I was talking to some of our 
donors, those who support this ministry. And we, we prayed together. We shared our heart for Canada. And one of our donors said, you know, I have my PVR set every day and I got my cup of coffee and this is like my devotional worship time. That really blessed me. Uh, she said that she, you know, prays along with us, that she's so happy to support the ministry because she knows that so many people need to hear the good news. Well, if you want to give a gift to this ministry, whatever size that you're able to give, we want to send you a thank you gift of Hope and Courage 30-day devotional. Brian and I wrote this. It's got a prayer place for you for your prayers, for your reflections. Give us a call and we'll give you Hope and Courage. And this month we'll, month, we'll also throw in seven days of blaze for our week of prayer, two for the price of one. Send us a special gift today. Thank you so much for partnering with us. March 17, 2017. 40-year-old Florida Highway Patrolman Carlos Rosario clocked a speeding car on State Road 836 and then signaled the driver to pull over. Following close behind was another car. The 26-year-old driver was texting. He didn't notice the car in front slowing down. I heard some tires squeaking, so when I look up, it's his car kind of swerving around another car, and that's when I see the vehicle collide with Carlos and send Carlos flying right by our cars. I was a traffic homicide investigator for, for a couple of years, and I've seen death. Unfortunately, I've seen fatalities on the highway that looked less injured than he did. Really, it just feels like your heart breaks. It really does. Carlos's wife, Anna, was at work when she got the call. My heart dropped. I was just scared. You know, I didn't want to imagine the worst. Carlos was life flighted to Jackson Ryder Trauma Center in Miami. Trauma surgeon Dr. Carl Schulman was one of a large team that fought to save him. Well, I'd say Carlos' situation when he first got here was about as serious as it gets. His blood pressure was very low, the transfusions were having to go constantly, and we were really struggling and doing everything we know how to do to keep him alive. There were multiple times where I thought he wasn't gonna make it. Anna arrived at the hospital where Carlos's brother, also a trooper, filled her in. I knew that it had to be really bad because the way he looked at me, I could see the fear in his eyes. He had a lot of facial injuries. He had a traumatic brain injury. I mean, his orthopedic injuries were devastating, devastating. The biggest thing that crossed my mind was, how long is he gonna live? And am I able to see him, or see, you know, see his eyes once more? For hours, Anna and a room full of friends, family, and Florida State troopers waited. Then doctors told her they discovered a brain bleed that might require additional surgery. I started to cry and my oldest son says, Mom, no, you know that we serve a God that he performs any miracle. And we went on our knees to pray. Everyone in that room, they also went on their knees too. And I said, God, I know what you can do for my husband. I believe it. Right there and then the doctors walked in and said he um, was able to react to what we were waiting for. We don't have to perform surgery on the brain in the area where he was bleeding. Carlos lived through the night, but was still in a coma. For 17 days, his loved ones waited and prayed until he finally woke up. And I remember seeing my wife there uh, with me, hugging me, kissing me, uh, the doctors. How do you feel? Asking me a lot of questions. It was joy, like joy and I had so much peace. He could not talk because his mouth was wide shut. But the movements that he would make, that's how I understood that I knew that he was going to be OK. I just felt it. I know that Jesus was with him. But with multiple fractures in his legs, arm, back, and jaw, Carlos began a very long, steep road of physical recovery that didn't look promising. To be honest with you, in those early days, I didn't see him getting back to work. Not being able to be there for the family, having Anna clean me. And until I could become independent again, those days were the worst. In the face of their fears, the Rosarios turned to God for hope and strength. 
then Anna would encourage me and my brother would encourage me and, hey, no, man, through Christ, you can do it. Let, let's just pray. Just shy of three months after the accident, Carlos stunned everyone when he took his first steps on his own. So when I started walking, it was exceedingly, abundantly above all we ask or think of. It was all him. And I knew that day that I was gonna be coming back to work one day. He has a lot of faith and I think that really drove him and pushed him to know that he could see the end. He knew he was gonna get better. For the next year and a half, Carlos worked hard in his therapy and leaned hard on God. The support he received from all kinds of people fueled his determination. Carlos not only learned to walk again, but in time began to run. He went on to recover fully and to everyone's amazement, Carlos returned to work less than two years after the accident. I didn't think he was gonna recover the way he recovered. It's pretty near miraculous. Carlos received a long letter of apology from the driver who hit him, and he chose to forgive him. The young man received five years probation, a suspended license, and community service. As for Carlos and Ana, they're thankful for each day of life. He's still here. He's still here, and I'm so grateful. He means the world to me. He's, he's my husband. He's my, my love. I'm one big believer in prayer, the biggest believer. That's just unimaginable, that love he's got for me, and for you, and for the world. It's too good to be true. That's all Jesus. Well, it's what our week of prayer, Bill. Isn't this great? It's awesome. Thank you for being here again with us and My sharing. Pleasure. So this whole bowl here, maybe you're wondering what's in the bowl. Yeah, right? yeah. These are all prayer requests that people oh. have sent into our office and they've actually got stamps on. You see that date stamp there? That yes. means they've already been prayed for as they come in. Our staff at 700 Club Canada prays for each prayer request. Our prayer team prays for them and now we get to pray for them. I love that. You know, prayer is a powerful thing, isn't it? Well, changes our life. You know, I was thinking about that, uh, the power of prayer, and there's an aspect of prayer that I've been really diving into lately, and it's lamenting. Mm. And we don't talk a lot about lamenting, but lament is uh, a complaint toward God because you know he can answer. It's a really interesting thing. It's so important that there's a whole book called Lamentations. It's yeah. a third of the Psalms. Yeah. And so as we pray, I'm reminded that you can actually bring your deep, darkest, yeah. Uh, elements of your life yeah. to him. And he not only hears, but he responds. That's See, right. that's the difference between sorrow. I think sorrow is, I have to fix it. I have to do it. The power of prayer is, no, you don't. God can. Yeah. And I love that. You know what? I think sometimes we think of lament as this really, you know, got serious, sad moment. Right. But you're so right. It's like, I get to bring these things to God. Right. I can complain to God. And maybe that was a no-no for some people, though. Well, I think so, but I think it's rooted in this idea that he's the only one who can answer me. Yes, and right. he is going to because he yeah. is good. Yeah. That's the power of prayer. That is so good. Well, I just hope that reminds all of us today when we're praying, God can handle anything. Yeah. Take it to him, right? Yes. Take your deepest concerns. Don't hold anything back because he is ready to hear you and respond. And I know that I'm looking through these prayer requests here, Bill, and I've got uh, two of them that, I, that I've looked at already are for their family. There's a lot of prayer for family here. Absolutely. And uh, I've got one here, a, a daughter who needs to travel safely and mm -hmm. someone who would like to retire and hopes that those, yeah. those needs are yeah. taken care of. Yeah. Again, for a family that would they find forgiveness and healing. And I think as, I, as I'm looking at these family needs, I realize in our nation, we need to be healed in our family units we again. Do. Really, we, we do. do. We do. And you know, today we're going to have a guest every day on our show. And today we are so privileged. We're going to be praying across Canada, first of all. So we're starting in the North, Bill, okay? Perfect. But all week, every day we're praying across Canada. And today we're heading North. And in the North, we have this amazing ministry, Bill Prankert's ministry, actually. And Stephen Carlton is joining us today, uh, actually from Ottawa. He works in none of it and all through the North. And we're going to have Stephen join us to pray with us through the North. So welcome, Stephen. Stephen. Hey, so great to be with you guys, man. And yeah, New Nevis right now is, is getting colder, but so is Ottawa. I feel like it's the same temperature. <laughs> so you travel a fair bit with your ministry because uh, you don't you're not just in none of it, you are throughout the north. Tell us just briefly what you do, Stephen. Some of some of our viewers might not have met you yet. 
Yeah, so it's uh, started in 2014, the Arctic Hope Project. Uh, Bill Prankard um, had, uh, there, there was a 14-year-old boy in a Nunavut community called Cape Doris. A 14-year-old boy took his, or oh, sorry, 11-year-old boy took his life. Mm -hmm. And that was the, uh, that was the youngest, uh, uh, I guess, successful attempt uh, in Nunavut's history. Nunavut, you know, still has the highest suicide rates in the country. And, and so Bill really uh, spent some time with the Lord and said, we need to come up with a solution. Uh, he hired my wife and I. My, my family comes from uh, Nunavut. Um, I was abused as a teenager. God really uh, dealt with all that. I, I forgave the person and it was healed of all that. Mm -hmm. So so that's really where we started is, is in, is in uh, Cape Dorset. And um, it's suicide prevention. It's hope. We've seen, uh, I mean, hundreds of young people uh, across the territory of Nunavut uh, give their hearts to the Lord. We've seen uh, people physically healed, emotionally healed. Mm -hmm. We've seen drug and alcohol addicted people uh, in the power of God just absolutely leave their, their addictions. So, yeah, so if there's any solution to be found here, it is found in the person of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, and so for our viewers, you know, who may be not familiar with, you know, you've mentioned some of the struggles, which is fantastic, but how could they pray specifically? What are some of the keys that you're seeing as you go into maybe some of these really difficult places and you're just pinpointing this is an area that if God would answer and deliver, we could see breakthrough. What would that be? So I, I'll, uh, I'll give one example. 2017, we had a partnership with uh, Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada. Uh, there were about 88 churches that partnered with us to pray for one community, and we prayed for the family unit that there would be healing there. We prayed uh, against this, this suicidal you know, wave uh, in, this, in this particular community, and then we also prayed for children. And uh, over the course of 2017, we discovered that there was not a single suicide in this community uh, mm -hmm. throughout the entire calendar year. And that hadn't happened in 17 years. It made, uh, it made Nunavut, uh, Nunavut's news. It made national news that it was this massive thing. And uh, we really felt that, you know, praying against this, this spirit, praying against uh, the, the pain and everything there, but really praying for a, a movement of healing, uh, that was, was what we felt was the cause of, of, uh, of this incredible thing. So for mm -hmm. all of your viewers and partners, Number one, prayer does work, yeah. you know, yes. and, and oftentimes you can feel disconnected from, from, uh, from a, a broader range of people praying. But mm -hmm. if we get Christians uh, on our knees, crying mm -hmm. out to the Lord, uh, as, as you said, Bill, uh, lamenting, really asking God for, for the, the solution here. Yeah. I know we're going to see suicide, uh, not mm -hmm. just the rates drop, but stop immediately mm -hmm. uh, across the territory of Nineveh. Uh, the, the amazing thing is, is that, the, the same problems that, that happen in Nunavut also take place in First Nation Reserve. So it's the same prayer. It's the yeah. same things that we're asking God for. And uh, the, the, the solution, the end goal yeah. is going to be uh, seeing uh, widespread healing across families, children, yeah. uh, young people. Yes. And um, you're going to find amazing things take place. That's right, Steve. I want you to start right now with prayer because we're not just going to talk about prayer. We're going to pray. Yes. So Steve, would you Amen. lead us right now? Bill, would you respond? Yes. And then I'll, I'll close. Let's, let's, let's go to prayer, Steve. Well, Father, we thank you for this incredible time we're living in right now. And God, we do. We do ask, Father, that you would move across Canada, across Indigenous Canada, Yes. Lord, we thank you that uh, that these we are first peoples here, which means that we're just first people on the land. And um, God, we ask by your spirit yes. that you would move, that you would touch families, that you would touch mothers and fathers. God, that you would heal deep, deep wounds. Yes. Father, we thank you that you are the answer, that you are the God who heals these things. And you have, and you are, and you will mm -hmm heal these things. God, we thank you that you're the one who sets the captives free. You're the one who breaks bondages. And in yes. Jesus' name, Lord, Amen. we ask in that Jesus you would break name. bondages of addiction. Yes. Father, that you would heal deep wounds and hearts. Lord, that, that there would be a movement of healing yes. across Nunavut yes. and all First Nation and Métis uh, mm -hmm. peoples in the name of Jesus. Yes. That Canada would see your power mm -hmm. displayed through the, the incredible deep healing taking place uh, in its indigenous people. And Canada will say, how did this happen? Mm, yes. And the answer will be the power of the blood of Jesus yes. is the thing that has yes. set in so Jesus many name. broken yes. and and um, and forgotten peoples mm -hmm. free. Lord, we ask for for just this, this spirit of suicide, for its back to be broken, broken for the church Jesus. to arise, for salvation 
salvations, widespread salvations, hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of indigenous people coming to the Lord. Father, we're asking for mighty prayer warriors mm -hmm. uh, who, who know their authority in you to begin to pray for their reserves and communities in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And that Lord, that, uh, that indigenous Canada, that all of Canada would see that you are the God of the universe who sets yes. his love before um, before us mm -hmm. and uh, father we just Jesus. ask for this mighty healing mm -hmm. to take place in jesus name Amen. yes and father i just want to thank you for those men and women who have heard the call and responded here am i send me i want to pray for steve and the ministry for his family that you'd protect and guide them empower them by your spirit to continue to do this incredibly important and essential work mm -hmm. god it's your heart for all people and god i also want to pray very specifically that you'd break the lies that have a stranglehold on some of these communities lies of of not being valued or not being important being pushed to the side god i pray in the mighty name of jesus that your truth your love your life and your power would replace the darkness and that as people's hearts are transformed the the depression the the, the thoughts of suicide would dissipate be destroyed in Jesus name Jesus. and so I am just asking God for your name to be known your love to be experienced and your power to transform these communities we align our hearts and our minds with Stephen what all that he is doing and all that he's asked for us to pray for in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Stephen, for being yeah. with us. God bless you. Mm -hmm. uh, keep praying, Canada. Yes. We believe that Jesus is the answer. And now a special treat. This is Now and Forever by Mark Masary and Canada United. Thanks for watching. I lift my eyes to mountains high. Where does my hair come from? I lift my eyes to mountains high. comes from you.